Welcome and hello. This is a video tutorial in HECRAS, and in this lesson, I'm going to be discussing encroachments, specifically 1D unsteady flow. All right, what I have on the screen here is actually the HECRAS user's manual. I'll leave a link to this page in the description, and this is the page I'll be uh, using to guide this particular lesson 1D unsteady flow, encroachment analysis. And if you watched the previous lesson, 34, which was 1D steady flow, we have the same five methods. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring this up to the screen right now. Method one through five, we'll be talking about these five methods a little bit later in the lesson. All right. So what I have on the screen now is my heck RAS. I've got a river reach sketched out here, which flows downstream from river station 10,000 all the way down to the cross section here at river station zero. If we're going to be using encroachments for unsteady flow, the way to do that is to go up to run unsteady flow analysis. And then I've got a, some data already loaded in and we'll take a look at that as well. But we're going to go up to options and then click on this unsteady flow encroachments options. This dialog box allows us to specify the encroachments for unsteady flow. As you can tell, I've already been uh, in here and changing some values around here. I'm going to change these values from um, to method one. So we have the uh, method one through five, whatever number you type in here, then the um, text box for that particular method is editable further over in that same row. So this interface is a little bit different than steady state where we just had the method number and then value one, value two. Now we have the method number and then um, the values for that particular method up along the top. So it's a little less compact, but we have the labels, which is a little bit more user friendly. OK, we're going to return to this screen in just a bit. So I'm going to click OK and then just take a step back and show the geometry and the flow data that we're going to be working with. Here we have the cross sections and I already have the encroachment shown in this particular cross section. This is at River Station 2000. But if I go downstream where there's no encroachment, you see the general shape or geometry of the river station and the dimensions right here in the table. All right, as for the unsteady flow data, I'm gonna go up to edit and then unsteady flow. I'm using normal depth for my downstream boundary condition. And then for upstream, I'm using a flow hydrograph and that flow starts at 1000 CFS, sorry, 100,000 CFS. It ramps up to 300,000 CFS and it stays there for a little while and then ramps back down. Here's a plot to demonstrate that hydrograph. 1,000, 100,000, 300,000, and then back to 100,000. The geometry and flow data should be constant for different encroachment data. That way the modeler can isolate and compare the effects of the encroachment with other encroachments or if there's no encroachment used. For plans, I'm going to create a base plan that has no encroachment and then run that plan. So I'm gonna close the hydraulic data, go to the unsteady flow plan. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this uh, one particular plan here, it's been giving me trouble. So I'm going to click delete plan. This is going to be called unsteady, no encroachment. It's what I'm going to recreate though. So I'll click OK. 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 And then I'm going to go file, new plan, unsteady, no encroachment. OK. I'm just going to copy that. OK. And OK. Now what I want to select here is base. And this is my flow file. This is going to be a three day simulation. So we'll just go 01 Jan 2020 until the 4th of January. And that will also be at midnight. OK, so file, save the plan and then click compute. All right, so that was the base flow. Go ahead and take a look at those results. View cross section. And now if I just toggle through the cross sections, this is going upstream right here. OK, so once we run uh, another unsteady flow simulation with encroachments, we have this base simulation to compare it with. Let's go ahead and create that plan now that has the encroachments for a non-steady flow. I'm going to go ahead and just delete what I had before. So file, delete, unsteady encroachment right here, and then click OK. OK. File, new plan. And then for the title, I'm going to call it unsteady encroachment and then click OK. Same with the short ID and we're ready to roll. So I probably could have copied the plan from the from the uh, no encroachment, but that's all right. All I have to do here is type in the same data for this simulation time window. Okay, so file, 
save plan. Now let's go ahead and add the encroachments, options, unsteady encroachments. This interface should look similar to the steady flow encroachments, but there's a few more options, of course. The base plan for encroachments, I want to set this to unsteady, no encroachments. That's That way it's going to make the comparison with the simulation we just ran with no encroachments. All right, there's the short ID. The target water surface rise value right here. This is the maximum allowable water surface rise in the floodway. So if we take a quick look at our cross sections here, we have an elevation of about 85 and then it goes up to about 105. We shouldn't have more than 20 feet of rise due to the encroachments. And in all reality, we're probably just gonna have a foot or two of rise based on the method and the data that I put in here in just a little bit. But 20 is maximum, that's uh, plenty. Next, we have encroachment regions right here. Currently, there's no regions presented in this plan. If encroachment regions are specified in the plan, the data is uh, coming from RAS Mapper. And I just don't have an example for uh, you guys in this uh, lesson right now. So we're going to skip over this. This relates to RAS Mapper, a topic that I haven't yet thoroughly covered, but we'll be doing that later. Over to the right, we have fill slope on terrain modifications and additional fill on terrain modifications. These fields both deal with sloping fill or adding additional height for terrain modifications in the same RAS mapper layer. As before, I'm not going to be dealing with uh, this box, but we'll uh, definitely touch not on it again in a future lesson or exercise. All right, so down below here, we have the river and the reach. You can only select one river and one reach at a time. So I'll select river A and then reach one. This get encroachments from steady flow plan is a way to import encroachment data from a steady flow plan into this unsteady flow plan. So I'm not going to do that right now. Let me just focus on the, the basics. Over here, we have a minimum bank offset distance. And this is the distance from the overbank station, both left side and right side, that the encroachment must uh, provide a buffer from. So if it's zero or we leave it blank, then it's just going to be assumed zero, which means the encroachment can come on the left side all the way up to this overbank station, and then on the right side also all the way to this overbank station. So let's go ahead and just set that to zero, which is right here. Just above that, we have a drop down for overbank uh, encroachment method, either equal conveyance reduction or preserve prior conveyance ratio. These are both used only for method five. So if we select method five here and use the method five data, that's uh, used for method five, as well as the field down below here, which is the maximum number of trials of zero through 100 for optimization parameters. Down below here, we have the actual data that HECRAS is going to be using, such as the river station and then what sort of encroachment, if any. You don't have to use encroachments for every single river station. In fact, what I'm going to do here is have an encroachment from river station 600 through, uh, sorry, 6,000 through 4,000. So if I say method one, one and one, and then how about one down here as well for 3,000, these fields open up and allow me to type in the actual uh, river station that that encroachment will affect. So say the encroachment comes all the way to river station 250 on the left and then 750 on the right. I can go ahead and copy those values here. So set 250 just for the selected area and then same with 750 set values just for the selected area. 750. The station left and station right right here refer to what I brought up earlier. The user enters the left and right encroachment stations because we're using method one. But if we're using method two or three or four or whatever, it's going to um, require different data for different columns in that table. So for method three, for instance, user specifies a percent reduction in conveyance. If I came up here and said method three is used, now this field opens up and it's a percent smaller uh, reduction. So if I typed in 10%, then the flow rate would be 10% of the base scenario. I'm not going to do that right now. Let's just stick with something simple like this. The encroachment regions right here for station left and station right are uh, coming from the RAS mapper encroachment regions. These are different, the first couple columns in the table. Again, that touches on RAS mapper, a topic I haven't touched on enough to uh, be able to provide enough information in a lesson for. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this simulation and just see what happens. So I'm going to click OK here, and then I'm going to go back to my HECRAS. 
Okay, so here's the unsteady flow. I'm going to go File, Save the Plan, and then click Compute. Okay, it's telling me that the base plan needs to be run if I'm going to be using the base plan for my comparison. So let's go ahead and go Unsteady Flow Encroachment. That's correct. I'm going to save that plan. I'm going to open up the Unsteady Flow No Encroachment. I thought I did this already, but perhaps not. And then File, Save. Options, I'm going to make sure Unsteady Encroachment is not checked so that we're not using encroachments, and then click Compute. Okay, so that's that's computed. Let me go back, open up the original plan file that we have with encroachments, Unsteady Encroachments, Options, there's the encroachments, and then the base plan file is right here. Okay, yeah, I thought that's what we had. Okay, let's go ahead and see if this works. Save it and compute. All right, good, it's working this time. Not sure what happened there, and it looks like we're done. All right, there's a few different ways to view results here. I'm going to go up to view and just look at cross sections first. The plan that I have loaded is currently unsteady encroachments. If I did unsteady, no encroachments, then I'm not going to see any encroachment encroachments as I cycle through the different cross sections. But if I go on to options and then plans and then toggle on the unsteady with encroachments, then from River Station 3000 to 7000, I believe, we should see the encroachments right there on the side. And this increases the water surface elevation. So that's 3000, 4000, 5000, and 6000. And then 7000 is where we don't have any more encroachments, but we should have a higher water surface elevation nonetheless. So I'm going to stick on this River Station 7000 cross section, but what I'm going to do is toggle on the plan for unsteady flow right here click ok and now you see the comparison so right here the lower red line that's currently highlighted is no encroachment and then this line right here is with encroachment so it looks like it's a couple of feet higher if i scroll down to the next cross section down 6000 surprisingly there's less of a difference for water surface elevation okay so let's go ahead and i think 7,000, yeah, about 7,000 appears to be the most change in water surface elevation. I'm going to go up to view, click on the pump summary profile table. Yeah, so right now I'm by default on standard table number one here. And at River Station 7,000, that's these two rows, we have a water surface elevation of 83.24 versus 85.95. So it's about 2.7 feet higher in water surface elevation with encroachments starting 1,000 feet feet upstream in the reach from where the encroachment actually starts. So that's pretty interesting. All right, uh, one other perspective plot that I like to look is this X, Y, Z perspective plots. Now what I'm gonna do here is toggle off the plan for no encroachments, which is this one here. Click OK. And then let's also focus in on maybe 1,000 through 8,000. So that's the upstream end there, 8,000. This is 1,000 options let me try to zoom in a little bit more see if that works right so for river station 1000 and 2000 there's no encroachments i don't know how well you can see this but the little black lines here represent the encroachments I suppose if i rotate it or the other way you may be able to see the encroachments for that river station 3000 4000 5000 and 6000 all right one last thing in this lesson is the import tool from um, importing the, the encroachments data from the 1D steady flow. So here we go, unsteady encroachments. If I go back to that unsteady encroachment value right here, here is my data. The user's manual describes the traditional 1D unsteady flow approach, where you first create and run an unsteady flow model with no encroachments. Then you run a steady flow model with encroachments, and then basically use this button to get encroachment data from the steady flow plan. So the numbers might not be quite as clean and round as 250 and 750, because it may be using a different method. Ultimately, the best way to go is to use any method you can, but the last iteration should be using method one. So you could use some of these other methods and then later use method one as a final iteration. All right, so I'm going to close that. Let's close this as well. Go to steady flow data. I'm going to open up the flow data I have here for 300,000 CFS. We have a profile one and profile two. PF1 is the base. PF2 is the one with encroachments. I'm going to run steady flow data now. 
This is with encroachments. So this touches on lesson 34 a little bit where I was talking about steady, steady flow. And then for method, let's go with method three. So this refers to the user specifies per percent reduction in conveyance. I'm just going to type the values in right here. So if I type in method three, for instance, three and three and three, what it's looking for for value one is going to be the percent reduction percentage. So let's just say it's 6%, 5%, 4%, and 3%. Okay, and equal conveyance reduction checkbox. Let's leave that checked for equal left and right side encroachment and then click compute. Okay, so that ran. I'm going to close that, close steady flow, open up unsteady flow. Now, what I want to do here for my plan, let me open up the steady unsteady flow plan I had before, which is right here. Okay, I'm going to go to options and then unsteady encroachments, get encroachment data from steady flow plan. And I'm going to click on steady encroachments. And this is for profile two, not profile one. It's the only option there is. And then, yes, I'm sure. Now, what it's showing me here is it's popped in these numbers, as you're seeing. 256 to 743. This is the station left and station right. And then let's see, 2000, 3000. Okay. Well, I don't have this fully figured out. I'm not sure why it's, um, I was expecting 6,000 down to 3000. It gave me uh, 6,000, 4,000 and 2000 instead. But anyway, that's the gist of it. And I still have some learning to do myself. So I'm going to leave it at that. This is the end of the lesson where we talked about unsteady flow encroachments for 1D flow using HECRAS.